This is the very lovely opening of Beethoven's Sonata in A-flat major, opus 110, one of Ludwig van Beethoven's last five sonatas in which transcendental feelings and spiritual journeys are uh, explored. And so it's no coincidence that in this experimental shape sonata movement that opens this work, uh, Beethoven brings the recapitulation of that opening theme in a transformed state, as if something is rumbling up from the lower regions of the keyboard, perhaps the soul being awakened. Let's hear the recap. These late sonatas of Beethoven had a profound impact upon the generation of Romantic composers who followed, because he showed that one could take a classic form, the sonata form, and play around with it and make all sorts of experimental inroads with it. And of course, composers such as Schumann and Brahms and Liszt would experiment very much further with the sonata form. Here's an example of a sonata a Romantic period sonata by an English composer that would seem to be very directly influenced by that very Beethoven sonata in A-flat major. This is the second movement of a sonata in A-flat major. The shape of the theme, the key relations, even the voicings are all pretty much the same. The recapitulation of that theme is also very similar. It is really quite remarkable how much this movement resembles the opening of Beethoven's Opus 110, and even more remarkable in that it was written by the English composer George Frederick Pinto in the year 1803, some 18 years before Beethoven wrote his own Opus 110. So the first thing that springs to mind is, did Beethoven steal that theme and even its treatment from poor Mr. Pinto? who died at the age of 21 from alcoholism. He was one of the greatest losses, I think, to uh, music, uh, Mr. Pinto. He joins the ranks of Mozart and Schubert as one of those great geniuses who died all too young. But Pinto hardly even had time to leave much mark at all. He wrote four sonatas, many, many songs, a small body of chamber music, but we're left to speculate what he would have achieved had he lived a little bit longer. It's clear that Ludwig van Beethoven knew the music of Pinto and his contemporaries, that would be Clementi, Field, and Duschek, all active in London right around the turn of the century. Whether he heard this sonata and stowed it away in his brain and sort of forgot about it later, or whether he actively took the themes and transformed it into one of the greatest sonatas of his output hardly really matters, but it's an interesting question for those of us who like our mysteries.